Hello everyone, my name is Wolfclog and welcome to Beta in You, the cut content trivia and fun fact series. This is my first ever commentated Beta in You, so please let me know what you think. With that being said and out of the way, let's take a look into the history of the weighted storage cube from Portal. This is how the cube looked in Narbacular Drop, the college project that inspired Portal. The cube cannot be picked up, and instead must be dropped onto a button using a portal. For those of you who don't know, our Back of the Drop was the capstone project from a Digipen team called Nuclear Monkey Software. We were all hired on the spot by Gabe Newell after he was presented with the game. As you can see here, press one button, press another, and uh, it killed me. Oh well, I tried. This is a brush cube as seen in the map Zoo underscore Test Area, a zoo level for early Prospect Air Assets circa August 23rd, 2005 according to the editor build number in the BMF. This cube is a funk underscore fizz box, meaning that instead of a model, it uses brushwork inside the map. The texture that it's using was later used for the first model version of the box. Due to its size, it cannot be picked up, and is essentially the same as the Narbacular Drop Cube, as a portal must be used to move it onto a button. This is the first modeled cube. It was leaked in the Portal Project Beta Assets Leak, which were allegedly given to them by a member of Valve Software. This cube can now be picked up, has some texture differences on each side of it, and has a little bit of bumpiness on it to ground it in reality. The cube was used in an era that we refer to as the Prospect Era of Portal, with this name being given due to the fact the testing facility was combine run and resembled Nova Prospect. This is the first of the cube revisions done after the switch of styles from Nova Prospect to Aperture Science. This cube, like the previous one, can be found in the files from the Portal Project Beta leak. This cube lacks detailing aside from an ambient occlusion bake, some noise, and a gray tone. That being said, there is concept art from Portal 2's official guide of the Portal 1 storage cube, which includes a rendition of what the cube would have looked like if this texture were finalized. As you can see here, the cube would have had about the same texturing as its final counterpart, but the divots in each corner would also include glowing lines. This cube didn't last for an incredibly long period of time, however, as the final version replaced it by mid-2006. This is the storage cube as it appears in the final Portal game. Not much to say about it, it's an iconic piece. I will mention, however, that the companion cube did not receive a unique skin until late 2006 or early 2007. Excellent. Before Portal 2's development had begun, a game called F-Stop was in the works. This game would have taken place in Aperture Science during the mid-20th century, it is known that storage cubes existed in F-Stop, and it's believed that they had a unique model. Although no footage of said model exists, there is concept art of it, and multiple people have done recreations of it, based off of said concept art. Here is the cube used in Leversoftworks remake to F-Stop, titled Shutter Speed or After Image. Here are remakes to all three concept art renditions of the F-Stop cube done by yours truly, this cube was found in Valve's Robot Repair, a VR experience made in Source 2 that included a high number of early assets left over from an automatic port from Source 1 to Source 2. The interesting thing about this cube is that the texture is its original 1024 pixel size, as opposed to all other versions of the Portal 2 cube, which use 512 textures or smaller. What's interesting is that this is the only version of the cube that uses the entirety of its texture sheet. The reason for this is that this cube is actually completely hollow. Allow me to turn off lighting here so we can see it better.
have seen in these images, a significant portion of the texture sheet for the weighted storage cube in Portal 2 is left completely unused. The fact that this cube has very slightly different UVs, a full resolution texture, lighter blue color, no dirt or cracks on it, and uses the entirety of the texture sheet proves that it was the first version of the cube. This cube is what we refer to as the E3 cube, as it's what the cube looked like at the E3 conference for Portal 2. The name is a slight misnomer, as, in reality, this is how the cube looked for most of Portal 2's development. So much so that, as a matter of fact, most cubes seen in the final game still look like this, as a side view of this version of the cube is used as a texture for the cube seen in vac tubes and under the floor. Its most major differences to the final cube are that the blue light is a lot lighter, the cube is completely white as opposed to white and gray in the final game. There's also no dirty version to it. We have the companion cube variant to this version in its entirety thanks to textures from Robot Repair. This is the storage cube as it looks like in the final game. Again, another case of something that I don't particularly have much to say about. It's simply a solid, iconic design. This is a cube that we know nothing about. It's possible that this cube dealt damage, or was maybe something the player needed to hold on to. It's even possible that this was the f-stop cube, as the early date lines up pretty closely, and the colors seem to match. That being said, we don't know for certain, so all we can do is speculate. This is the Skull Cube, an unused variant of the Storage Cube from Portal Still Alive. The Skull Cube would have dropped from cube droppers connected to pedestals with the same skull icon on them, with the skull signifying that the cube would be destroyed when the button is pushed. The reason behind why this texture went unused is unknown, but most ports of Portal Still Alive feature them. That about wraps things up. Thank you all very much for watching. If you're interested in seeing more things like this in the future, feel free to subscribe and let me know how you felt in the comments. If you'd like to see me cover a particular subject, feel free to drop that down there as well. Thank you all very much for watching, I've been Moldclock, and I will see you all in the next video.